Well, firstly, I think I need to say a very happy Christmas. And thank you very much indeed for listening to the show today. It is Christmas Day of 2022 and we've had a belter. We've had family round. We've had uh, far too much to eat, far too much to drink. And it's been a lovely day. The boys have got everything they wanted for their Christmas this year. And I was pretty lucky myself as well. So it's been a great day and I hope you've had a good day as well. If you're on your own, then I do hope that you've managed to find a bit of Christmas cheer and a a little bit of festive fun and maybe have a, a, a glass or two. Welcome to another episode of Brett's Old Time Radio Show. Welcome to my home in beautiful Lime Bay where it is absolutely magical today and we're having a great day. We've been down onto the beach just to take a little wander and it's been pretty idyllic so uh, I hope you've had a good day as well. Welcome to my home in beautiful Lime Bay where this beautiful Christmas day night is absolutely wonderful. The great news is I'm allowed to light the fire now, so if you'd like to come and join us for a little mince pie and maybe a a little drop of rum or whatever you fancy, then please do feel free to stop by. You'd be more than welcome. Having the fire lit does make a big difference. Huge thank you for joining me once again for our regular late night visit to those dusty studio archives of old time radio shows right here at my home on the south coast of the United Kingdom. Don't forget, I've got an Instagram page and a YouTube channel, both called Brett's Old Time Radio Show, and I'd love it if you you could follow me there. Feel free to send some feedback, brett at touradate.co.uk. Now, it's time to check in on The Saints with a very Christmassy episode. The Adventures of The Saints, starring Vincent Price. The Saint. Based on characters created by Leslie Charteris and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures, the Robin Hood of modern crime now comes transcribed to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as... The Saint. Come in. Hi, Mr. Templeton. Oh, hello, Louie. Where are you? I'm in my room. I'll be ready in a minute. (laughs) Hey, wait till you see my cab. I gave it a bath for Christmas. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Look, I don't want to rush you, but if you don't hurry, Christmas Eve is going to be already Christmas morning. And what will all them tots think? Oh, them tots will be singularly fortunate. However, all I have to do now is get my whiskers on. There. (laughs) How do I look? Mr. Templer, if I didn't know you was Mr. Templer, I wouldn't know who you were. Hmm. Louie, don't I look like Santa Claus? This may come as a surprise to you, Mr. Temple. Santa Claus is fat. Oh. You're not fat. Oh. Well, hand me that cushion from the couch, huh? Okay. Here. Yeah, thank you. Now then. Uh, how's that? Now say ho, ho, ho. What for? Santa Claus is always say ho, ho, ho. Oh, I see. Uh, uh, ho, ho, ho. Well, anyway, you look like Santa Claus. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Temple, whose idea was this? Uh, Mrs. Winterbottom's. Oh, the dame who annoys tots on Christmas Eve. Mrs. Huh? Winterbottom is a very well-known philanthropist. And every Christmas Eve, she collects hundreds of small children and feeds them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who feeds them the rest of the year? Don't be bitter, Louie. Sorry. Or at least I ought to give the little tots a, a laugh. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose there is something to be said for Mrs. Winterbottom. Well, don't say it now. Don't worry. There's something to be said for Santa Claus, too. He does go around filling stockings. Yeah, I know a blonde. Shouldn't say that either, huh? No. Mm, someone at the door. Louis, would you mind? No. Uh, it's probably one of them tots. Correction, it's a tot 20 years later. Get in. I'm already in. Back up. I'm backing up. Thanks. Now reach, gents. You know, that gun in her hand looks loaded. Now that you mention Reach. For what? Uh, the chandelier. You can't. Why not? No chandelier. Oh, a wise guy, huh? If you're going to shoot me, I insist on knowing your name. Uh, uh, just call me Sally. Sally. And uh, your last name? Never mind that. How would you like to get plugged in the... In the... Bread basket? Where? Oh, let's pass lightly over that. I wouldn't like to get plugged anywhere. And shut up. All right. Where is it? Uh, right down the hall. Are you it? trying to be smart? Not especially. So it's going to be like that, huh? Like what? Now you listen to me, Fats Boylan. Huh? You shut up too. I didn't say anything. Well, shut up anyway. I'm shutting up. Uh, 
Uh, what was I saying? You just finished calling me Fats Boylan. Uh, that's right. That's wrong. I'm not Fats Boylan. Ha. Huh. Well, it helps keep the conversation Look, going. Look, Fats, are you going to stop stalling and hand over the stuff, or will I have to shoot? Uh, since I am not Fats Boylan, and since I have no stuff to hand over, I'm afraid you'll have to shoot. Mr. Templer, that could be fatal. You keep quiet, punk. Who's a punk? You're a punk. Mr. Templer, am I a punk? Well, Sally is just a little confused this evening, Confused Louie. or not, she shouldn't call oh, me a... shut up! Oh. You know, you don't have to start bawling. I am not bawling. I, I am... You were just about to shoot me. Well, I know, but then you'd bleed. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I can't stand the sight of blood. Why don't you strangle him? Louie, don't be unkind. Oh, it seems to be the doorbell again. No, wait. Oh, it's very impolite to keep people waiting. But I, I must have been followed here. I... Sally, look, stop illustrating a point with that gun. It might go off. I don't care. But then I bleed. But where can I go? I've got to hide. Well, try the kitchen. All right. Well, come on in. It's open house tonight. Well, well, my old pal, Fat I am not. Boylan. Although I'm beginning to waver. Perhaps I am. <laughs> Simon, the split personality. Who are you? Well, Joe Hudson. You remember your old pal, Hudson. Hudson. Hmm. Well, I must admit you look like a hornet, but your lines aren't as nice. Look, if I'm your old pal, why don't I know you? Oh, that's easy. We never met personally. Well, how else can you meet? Ignore that. But if we haven't met personally or otherwise, how can I be your pal? Oh, I, I was just being friendly. <laughs> Besides... Hey, you got something for me. I have? Uh, oh, great little kidder, ain't you, Fats? <laughs> ain't he, pal? Now I feel better. I'm a pal, too. Look, I wish I deserved your delighted choice, uh, look, but... just leave me have the stuff, and the then I'll get... Stuff again. What stuff? Am I going to have trouble with you? Uh, the door behind you is open. Why don't you use it, huh? In that way, nobody will have any trouble. I'll use it. I'll use it after. After what? Such so like that, huh? Ever see one of these before... I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint you, but the answer is yes, I have. Good, good. Then you know how it works. It shoots bullets at guys. Guys who get bullet shot at them have a habit of dying. Really? Well, then perhaps you'd better not shoot that gun at me. I won't. So give me. So I ain't got. Well, that is I. That is you ain't got. <laughs> Thanks, Louis. Basic, I ain't a patient man. Hand the stuff over or I... I don't have any stuff. Or you get shot. I bleed. Who cares? I do. <laughs> I hoped you might. However, this could be a stall. This could be trouble, so you... You can't shoot him. Why not? It's against the law. I read it in the papers. It's against the law. Yeah, yeah, I believe you. Oh, well, so that's okay. Yeah, but I like doing things against the law. Oh, well, you you, you could go to jail. I already been there. Well, for shooting somebody, that they'll hang you or something. If somebody told them. Well, I would. You would, huh? Uh, I would. So maybe I'd better shoot you first. Well, I, you know, I wouldn't want to deprive Mr. Templer of the privilege. I, well, I, Fats, it's your last chance. Oh, not that phrase. Also, I still don't so know... So it looks like I'm going to break a law. Hey, who did that? You did, you dope. I did not. This here is a plan. But you won't get away with it. <sighs> Goodbye, Mr. Hudson. Mr. Templer, who made with the artillery? It must have been Sally. She's in the kitchen. She can stay there. She saved our lives, Louie. Yeah, but maybe by now she's found out she likes to shoot guns. Well, let's hope not. Uh, hello. It was nice of you to frighten Mr. Hudson off. I did? You did. I, I didn't hit anybody? No. Oh, I'm so glad. Hey, hey I, I, I've got her. She's out cold. <laughs> Come on, I'll put her on the couch. Yeah. Come on. Oh. <laughs> a little late, but somebody ought to mention she is not a bad-looking dish. You've mentioned it. Mm. Looking for smelling salts in her bag? No. Identification. Huh. Here's a driver's license. Her name is Sally Walters. Address, 49 Arden Drive. Huh. Social security card. She's a secretary. That's what I need. Oh, take it back. She's coming, too. Better put the bag back. Yeah, but keep the gun, though. There's still some bullets in it. No. We don't want her to know we went through her bag. We're ashamed of ourselves? We're going to pay her a visit. She ain't home. But she will be after she leaves here, and then perhaps we can find out what keeps the uh, home fires burning. Sally was 
was in kind of a hurry leaving us. So she was. Mr. Templer, don't look right. Santa Claus chasing a blonde. Uh, I'm not chasing her. Technicalities will get you no place. Hey, this must be it. 49. What is she a secretary of? The Treasury? Mm, I suspect this is where she works, Louie. She works overtime, huh? Yeah, and probably sleeps in. Come on. Yeah. I hope that nobody is peeking because they'll think Santa Claus is off schedule. I think perhaps I can manage without the whiskers. Yeah. Ouch! Now you look like an imposter. Yeah. Will you ring, Louie? Okay. You know, this is the type house. I got a feeling Santa Claus would have to use the saving center. Shh, shh, shh. Uh, <clears throat> yes. I'm Simon Templer. You are? I am. There's nothing I can do about it. Mm, Mr. Templer, all butlers are like him? I doubt it. I think he's been practicing. Ha. Ha. Well, good night, then. I think not. Would you mind removing your shoe from the door? I would. You might at least have shined it. Humphrey, whoever is it at this time of night? No one, madam. Oh, but such an interesting-looking no one. Santa Claus, you've lost your whiskers. <laughs> I have not there, right here in my pocket. Oh, how nice. Actually, my name is Simon Templer. I'm Carla Worth. Uh, this is Louie. Hi. Oh, I, I mean... Hi. Hmm, be kind to the peasant's type. Uh, did you want to see me? Uh, now that I've seen you, uh, yes. Well, come in, then. <laughs> Thank you. But, madam... Humphrey, go away. Yes, madam. Humphrey's such a problem sometimes. Shall we? Hmm. Nice? Mm, yeah. Fire in the fireplace, books on the bookshelves, port in that decanter. Yes, would you like some? Uh, no, thank you. I just wanted to be sure the accessories were all correct. Someday, maybe I'll find some other wine besides port in the decanter. I dream. Simon, are you the one who found them? It's beginning again. Found what? My jewels, of course. Have they been lost? Simon, they were stolen. You know that, don't you? Should I? I've heard of the saint, Simon. I didn't know he was also a Santa Claus. Oh, it's a fleeting impulse. Uh, when were your jewels stolen? This afternoon. You see, Claude, my husband, that is, oh. bought me them for Christmas. <laughs> Santa Claude. Louis. Sorry. We decided to have the party this afternoon. We thought it'd be nice to have a quiet eve, so we did. The jewels were in quite a large box. There were quite a lot of them. And? Claude had hired a Santa Claus, but before the party was over, Santa Claus had disappeared. So at the jewels. Well, there must have been some precautions. Oh, there were several detectives. Oh. But the Santa Claus said he was going out to get some air while the party was on. He never came back. But he didn't have the jewels on him. The box was locked and it was too large for the detectives not to have noticed. I see. The name of the man hired to play Santa Claus was, of course, uh... Fat Spoiler. And who may you be? Claude, this is Simon Templer. I and know... Louis. I know neither of them. Snoops, obviously. Get rid of them. Claude likes to behave as though he were an emperor on occasion. The box wasn't found anywhere in the house? The jewel box, no. The jewels were insured? Naturally. It's none of your affair. I shall speak severely to Humphrey. He should never have let you in. I let them in, darling. So now he's going to speak severely to her? Uh, we'll go quietly, except... Uh, Mr. Worth, what is Fats Boylan's address? I have no idea. Good night. Good night, Simon, and I'm sorry. So am I. I'll show you out. Thank you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pronounced Carla Worth. Yeah. What do we do now, Santa Claus? Uh, we get into your nice, clean cab and... Hey, wait a minute, Louie. Hm. Now we're going to find out what became of Sally. Simon... Well, good evening, Sally. I overheard. Fat's address is 17 Beale Street. 17 Beale. Yes, I've got to get right back to the house before anybody notices. Goodbye. An awful short visit. A bit long enough. Now we're going to visit Mr. Boylan? I think so. I hope he ain't so handy with a gun as the rest of these characters. He may be. He may not be. Now I'm all cheered up. Mm, but there's one thing I'm sure he isn't. What's that? Fat. <laughs> Quite a change from the Waits dump. Now this is a dump. Yeah, Mr. Boylan would seem to be shy. Mr. Templer, you said something about the one thing he wouldn't be was fat. Why, because he was called fats? Mm, not exactly. 
Louis, I'm worried. Hmm? Hey. Hey, the door was open. Yes. Maybe that means our boy has flown? Maybe. Come on, let's go in. Okay. I ain't usually so poetical, but uh, the light's on. Yes. And the room looks funny. Looks like a, a hurricane came to stay for dinner. Hmm, and remained for six months. Somebody was looking for a, a jewel box? And someone obviously didn't find it. The extent of the search indicates that. Nothing was left untouched. It's a funny smell in this room, you know. A couple of funny smells. Yeah. One's perfume and the other... Gunpowder. Huh? Gunpowder. That's why I ain't been looking behind any pieces of furniture. It really wasn't very far to look, Louie. Huh? He's behind the day bed. Fats? Fats, Louie. He, uh, he ain't doing so good? He's dead. Uh, and Louie... Yeah? He wasn't fat. Mr. Templer? Yes, Louis? We're being followed. Since? Since uh, we got out of Boylan's place. That's interesting. Louis, stop the cab. That'll make it easier for whoever's following us. Exactly what I want. Even on Christmas Eve, this shouldn't happen. Now what? Uh, we get out. Don't look behind you. Start walking. Yeah. This here is a nice, lonely street. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is home hanging up stockings. I wouldn't mind hanging up stockings myself. I, I, I... Who do you think it is? I think it's our friend Hudson. Oh, I just lost five pounds. You mean the guy that was chasing Sally who was all ready to shoot us until she made the explosion? A neat reminder. Oh, you think he wants our money or our life? Possibly. What kind of an answer is that? In here, you... quickly. Here. Mr. Temple, this here alley is full of garbage cans. It's also dark. You don't have to see garbage cans to know they're around. <laughs> Hudson? Yes. Good evening, Hudson. Huh? Don't turn around. I've got a gun on you. Hey, I don't like it. Louie, take Mr. Hudson's gun away from him. Okay. Got it, Mr. Templer. Good. Aim it at him. Hey, now, wait a minute. You can't shoot me with my own gun. Why not? That ain't tactful. Uh, what other gun could I shoot you with? Your own. Hey, you mean you ain't got a... Oh, mister, you are a liar. And on Christmas Eve, too. Hudson, who hired you to follow Sally and me? Uh, yeah, that was my own idea. Uh, Louie, hmm? Mr. Hudson isn't being friendly. He ain't, huh? Mm, he ain't. Therefore... Hey, hey no, don't, don't lose your heads, fellas. We've lost patience with him, Louie. We have? Mm, shoot him, Louie. He's beginning to bore me. He's beginning to... I, sh... I, I should shoot him? Yes. Fatal? Fatal. Okay. Except I don't know what my wife and six kids are going to say. You haven't but... got a wife and six kids. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, please. Louie... We're being cruel, prolonging Mr. Hudson's agony. Put him out of it. Now, wait a minute. I, I, Who hired you? Uh, Mrs. Worth. Mrs. Carla Worth. You're quite sure? Strike me dead. If, uh, that is, don't strike me dead. Look, look, if she didn't, would I say, why would I say she did? Uh, you have a point there. But uh, why should she have wanted you to follow Sally? Well, she had an idea. Her husband and Sally were kind of, uh, you, you know... Uh, yeah, kind of uh, decorating their own little tree together. Hmm? I couldn't put it more tactful. Oh, I see. So if you got enough divorce evidence, Mrs. Worth could hold up her husband for plenty of alimony. No. No? No, Mrs. Worth is the babe with the dough. Mr. Worth is a very well-educated bum. Indeed. Huh? It's interesting. Uh, Louis, let me have the gun. Yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, wait, I, I, th I just told you the truth. I'm sure you did. No. Mr. Templer, that's gratitude? It's necessity. Oh. We need him out of the way for a little while. He's out of the way. Now, uh... Yeah? Now we're going to find out who else knew that Fats Boylan was thin. <laughs> You know, if we visit it often enough, I might even get accustomed to this joint. Mm, you might also start confusing yourself with Grant. Mm. <clears throat> uh, good evening, Humphrey. I'm sorry the family retired for the night. Well, it is late, I know. I wish to retire myself. Why, Humphrey, you don't look 65. Good night, sir. Aren't you going to ask us in? No. Why, Humphrey, I thought you and I were going to sing Christmas carols together. Let go of me. Shut the door, Louis. Okay. I shall complain. All uh, right, but not now. You... Mr. Templer, 
going to wear that gun out hitting people over the head with it. And I couldn't have him warn anyone we're here. Why, we're going to burgle the joint? In a way. Huh? And a kind of description would be search the place, Louie. Oh, for what? Oddly enough, something that can't be seen or touched. Sounds like a ghost. Yes, and in a way it is. The ghost of a murderer. <laughs> Night before Christmas, all right, but a creature is stirring. A couple of creatures, us. Yeah. We've covered all the rooms on the other landing. Therefore, the bedroom should be here. And therefore, this should be someone's bedroom. Let's go in. We're sleeping? Now, if I can open the door softly enough and look in. Mm-hmm. Moonlight through the window. Yes. The dressing room. Door beyond would be the bedroom proper. Proper is not a word we're in any position to throw around. Yeah, we'll have to go in to the dressing room. Come on, Louis. Okay. Wait a minute, Louis. Hmm? Inhale. Mr. Temple, I don't usually take breathing exercises in the middle of the night. Louis. All right. I'm inhaling. Well? Perfume. Mm-hmm. Familiar? I could learn to love it, but no. Mm. Well, then out we go. didn't care for that perfume. He didn't tell me anything. What do you want perfume should tell you? Who killed Fats Boylan? Another bedroom. We go in? Naturally. <laughs> for a bachelor, that ain't the word you should have used. I'm beginning to get worried about this. Supposing somebody screams. Pull yourself together, Louis. Okay. After all, like the poet says, strong heart never won fair maiden. You mean faint heart. All right, so for dinner I'll eat dog food. Now. Mm-hmm. Another dressing room. Well. Hey, Mr. Templer. Yes. The same perfume we noticed. <laughs> uh oh, don't be frightened. Why, Simon, what are you doing in here? Louie and I have been testing perfumes. It's the middle of the night. You're waking me. I'm sorry. I'm even sorrier about something else. What's that? The perfume you use is very distinctive, Sally. Am I supposed to say thanks? No. Because the last place Louie and I noticed it was in Fats Boylan's room. Minutes after he'd been killed. Oh. Not good, Sally. You're, you're making all this up. Or... No, no. This bottle of perfume will be evidence. But I didn't kill Boylan. You must be joking about that. I don't think a jury would find it funny. You knew about Boylan stealing the jewels. You must have helped him. I, I didn't. But then you found yourself being trailed by Hudson, who'd been hired by Mrs. Worth. You were afraid he'd discover the connection between you and Boylan. That's why you came to my apartment. No. Oh, yes. You hoped I'd throw Hudson off, perhaps frighten him. In the meanwhile, you could get to Boylan, get the jewels from him. That isn't true. But when you got to Boylan's place, you found him already dead. And the jewels gone. I didn't. It would be much better for you that way. What do you mean? You wouldn't be liable to a first-degree murder charge. But there were detectives here while the party was going on. Boylan couldn't have stolen the jewels. They saw him leave. He didn't have them. He did have them. He was playing Santa Claus. And he was a thin man. Santa Clauses, as Louis pointed out to me earlier tonight, are fat. Therefore, Boylan entered this house wearing padding underneath his costume. He left it with a large jewel box in place of the padding. That's how he did it, Sally. You're smart. Hmm. You found Boylan. You knew his address. Therefore, you'd hired him in the first place. And therefore, also, a jury would believe you'd killed him unless you tell us who did Oh, all right. I'll tell There's you... There's really no need, my dear. Oh, oh, Claude. Hey, Mr. Templer, tell him to point the gun someplace Mr. else. Mr. Worth, point that gun someplace else. I prefer this direction. You were saying, Mr. Templer, about the jewels. The jewels were insured. Therefore, you, Mr. Worth, arranged to have them stolen. Indeed. Indeed. In that way, you could retain the jewels, the insurance money as well, and not worry very much whether or not your wife divorced you. Clever. Boylan is dead. How true. You had to see to that, didn't you? Otherwise, he might have blackmailed you for the rest of your life or for whatever money you got out of the entire crooked deal. I can see two other deaths. Yours, your friend. And Sally? You going to kill her, too? 
That depends, I should think, on Sally. Claude, I never knew you intended to, to kill anyone. There's no need to play the ingenue quite so strenuously, my dear. You were in on most of it. But not murder. Hmm. I'm afraid Mr. Templer's pessimism is justified. I shall have to include you. But however did you get on to her, Templer? Her perfume. To be precise, this perfume. Well, you got him in the eye. Yeah, I hope this gets him someplace more effective. <laughs> Mr. Templer, the trail of unconscious bodies you're leaving behind you tonight, if laid end to end, yes, Louis. would look terrible. <laughs> Simon. Yes, Carla? You've been very sweet. Even without your whiskers, you've been sort of a, a Santa Claus to me. <laughs> May I? Oh, with pleasure. Well, <laughs> I never knew Santa Claus could kiss like that. The Santa Claus is no saint. Yes? Oh. <laughs> um, uh, hello, Louis. Mr. Templer, you better put on your whiskers. You've forgotten all about Mrs. Winterbottom? Mrs. Win... Oh. oh, well, the hour is past midnight. The tots have undoubtedly totted off to bed by now. Louis, you may tell Mrs. Winterbottom... I know. <laughs> that the saint ain't no Santa Claus. <laughs> You have been listening to another transcribed adventure of The Saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. Now, here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, all of us who live in the United States are aware of the spiritual values of American life, our factories and machines and luxuries. But there is another side to American life, a side made up of spiritual values. Our country was founded upon faith in God, in the Declaration of Independence, it states that men were endowed by their Creator with certain inalienable rights. Thus, religious faith is part of the very foundation of American democracy, and one of our most precious national heritages is freedom of worship. By exercising this freedom, you and your families can enjoy the spiritual pleasures that come with church or synagogue attendance. Moreover, your religious leaders stand ready to give you their help, whether you need personal or family guidance. And if you suffer the loneliness natural to a newcomer to this country, the churches of your faith will welcome you. We all know that without spiritual values, the other advantages of American life have little meaning. Without faith, the family and the community become unstable. Without faith, the individual denies himself the peace and guidance of religion. The doors of your churches and synagogues are open to you. The freedom to worship as you please is yours. And so America's religious organizations invite you to find yourself through faith and to come to church this week. And may I wish you all a wonderful Christmas and for the world, peace. In all the years to come. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at this same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night. This adventure of The Saint was written by Louis Vitties. Our cast included Mary Ship as Sally and Betty Lou Gerson as Carla. High Everback was Hudson. Ted Osborne, Claude. The Butler, Stanley Farrar. Louis is played by Larry Dotkin. The Saint, based on characters created by Leslie Charteris, is a James L. Safier production and is directed by Helen Mack. Vincent Price is soon to be seen co-starring in RKO's production of His Kind of Woman. All you Saint fans will be glad to know that the Saint comic books are on sale at all newsstands. Your announcer, Don Stanley. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. 
For your Christmas Eve listening pleasure, there's another broadcast of NBC's Sunday hour and a half extravaganza, The Big Show. There's a whole Christmas stocking full of stars, including Tallulah, Jimmy Durante, Edwin, Charles Boyer, Robert Merrill, and many more. Tonight also means your weekly visit with the Harris family on the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. Be sure to hear this special Christmas program later today on NBC. Happy holiday, happy listening. Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed our latest episode of The Saint. Don't forget, we're going to be back tomorrow with a Boxing Day special of Hancock's Half Hour. I'm sure you are going to absolutely love it. It'll be going live at 5pm GMT, so don't miss it. You can email me, brett, at toradate.co.uk. I'd love to know your thoughts on the show. Thanks for listening. I'll be with you seven days a week, each and every week, and I'll see you next time on Brett's All Time Radio Show. Have a lovely what's left of Christmas Day today. And uh, back to it again tomorrow. More turkey for Boxing Day. Love you. Bye.